good morning, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are YouTube. So, rather a grey and windy day here in Milton Keynes, so not natural biking weather, but I haven't been out in Yesterday for a long time, I do enjoy riding this bike enormously, and um, I want to test out a couple of cameras as well, so I've done a few changes to the motor vlogging setup, and I thought it's be a good opportunity to go through what I use to vlog as well, so really a bit of a techie, slightly techie one, but it's something that there's a lot of bad information out there and some good information. So we'll start with the cameras because that's that's one of the most essential things. Now the normal procedure for a motor vlogger is you go along, you get yourself a GoPro and you start vlogging and that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that at all. But believe it or not, despite its popularity with the motor vlogging community, GoPro is not the ideal camera and there's a couple of things about it that make it unideal. So, is that a word? Unideal? I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of things about it that mean it is compromised as a motor vlogging camera somewhat. The first one is its shape. Now, the GoPro is almost a traditional camera shaped camera and the only place you can mount it reliably is the chin bar of the helmet. Now that's not an ideal location. It's good from a shot point of view, it gives a lovely shot. Um, I love the work there. But it is a little bit risky if an impact happens. You've got to think about where the camera is going to go and it's going to go into your lower jaw, which isn't ideal. Uh, you can mount it on the side of the helmet um, or the top of the helmet. Now, I utterly, utterly do not recommend mounting on the top of your helmet. Um, it's just not. Again, it's that same thing. If there's an impact, it's going to go into an area where there's no give. And apparently, poor old Michael Schumacher, one of the things that caused his a really unfortunate situation was his helmet camera punched through his helmet. And it, it created a, a disastrous situation, which is horrible. Um, so ideally, you want to mount your, your camera with uh, self-adhesive pads. But a GoPro on the side of your helmet, mounted with a self-adhesive pad, is a bit of a liability because of the shape of them they have a huge amount of wind resistance and you don't necessarily think of that when you're mounting helmets but it can lead to you constantly having your head pulled to one side so the other camera which is somewhat popular in the motor vlogging community but a lot less so than the gopro is the drift now i've been using a drift hd ever since i started vlogging which is what three years ago now um, two or three years ago when I actually rebuilt this bike as it happened. I started filming and started my YouTube channel properly then to video put the bike back together during the restoration. Um, so do check out the playlist of FZR restoration because you can see this bike, this very bike here, being put together. And uh, so yeah, I used the Drift. Now there's two advantages to the Drift. Now it's a good HD camera. There's better versions out now, the Drift Ghost S and so forth. But they kind of built it in a different way internally. So, rather than being front-on, it's sort of end-on. Um, and that has the advantage that it's presenting the smallest face possible to the wind. And that's got a benefit, obviously, it means that the camera is more aerodynamic. And you think, really, does it make that much difference? Yeah, it really does. I mean, I've got my drift mounted via self-adhesive pads on the right-hand side of my helmet. And I can't tell it's there. It just simply does not produce any notable drag at all. Whereas I've had people that ride with GoPros in the same position said, oh, how can you bear it pulling your head over to the side like that? It's like, drift doesn't. The other advantage on that is the drift has a replaceable glass cover over the lens, which is domed. So that also helps its aerodynamics. But there is an ace in the sleeve of the drift. And that is that with the way the camera's designed, it's designed so you can mount it anywhere you want because the lens and the CMOS sensor inside the camera rotates and there's a little dit at the top of the uh, camera's lens and lens holder and that as long as that is at the top of your frame or as long as that pointing upright you'll always be correct in your frame so you can mount it at an angle you can mount it all over the place if I had a GoPro where I had this you'd be looking like this all the time because it actually tucks under and leans over at quite an angle so I just rotate the lens to suit. So in my opinion, the Drift is the more suitable camera. Now when I started vlogging, I went, as a lot of people do, into a lot of effort to find a camera with a mic input in it. 
and that does increase the price of the camera quite notably and it does limit your choices however it's simply not necessary the mic inputs on cameras are not that great what you really want to do is get yourself an off-board sound recorder like uh, like a Tascam DR05 now I've put a link to one of those uh, in Amazon in the description but they're about £90 in the UK somewhere around the $100 mark in the States and it is the best investment you will ever make in your motor vlogging that along with careful mic positioning will improve your audio immensely and it's a lot more customizable in the settings than the uh, output of the camera is or the mic input of the camera is so it is a much better option now with regards you'll notice I've cut to it a couple of times already I've got a camera facing backwards now um, now that is not possibly going to stay there that may move to another location and I have been trialing another camera there as well which I've had in the past now the little small bullet camera which I'll cut into now I don't know how successful at the time of writing that would have been but I've had that mounted for a couple of years off the rear footrest hanger looking at the exhaust with quite a bit of success and that's given a good good second camera and looking forward as well that's worked quite well but this one that I'm cutting to now that's a camera called an SJ5000 and it's a GoPro clone SJ cam are one of the better GoPro clones so there's plenty out there um, but the advantage with this camera is its price now it's they apparently claim it will do 4k it's not a real 4k but it will shoot true 1080p and it will shoot it at 30 or 60 frames per second for ease of use I keep everything at 30 frames per second because that matches my output from my software well but they're 59 quid you know and it's gyro stabilized uh, but they don't have the mic input so compared to a GoPro now I've, I've used a GoPro in a couple of environments GoPros do have the ability to have a mic put into them and plugged into them and equally GoPros also have gyro stabilization, stabilization GPS inputs and all sorts of things like that I can just get through here with the cross hatching don't need to wait um, and yeah the GoPro is a great camera but they are £400 so the only thing you can't do with the SJ5000 is the audio but then what you can do is buy your Tascam DR05 put the audio through that turn the audio off on the uh, SJ5000 and Robert is thy mother's brother and off you go and also that saves the file size a little bit it doesn't record an audio track but there you go, I mean, that's, that's what I would do um, but some people like the simplicity of just plugging a mic into their GoPro and off they go and it's their money, their choice but for me the price difference, you know, £250 price difference is quite a lot so for something that's going to work well there you go but going back again to the bullet cam I'll click again onto that one this is for a previous ride but I, I trialled it just to see what it's going to work like now that is a camera called an M500 now I would have recommended it like I said I've been using an M5000 now 500 sorry for a couple of years probably or in fact I bought it before I started vlogging and I bought it to record uh, a Land Center John O'Groats run I did on a Honda C90 with some friends and um, it worked very very well but there's been a change now to the M500 and it used to be a case that you could hack the firmware on it and update the firmware to allow continuous recording they've changed them now and you can only record three minute clips and they work together now that works okay for a rear facing camera because you're never going to be spending three minutes looking at it you just use whatever suitable that won't work if it's your motor vlogging camera because you won't have any uninterrupted clip but unfortunately now you can't change that whereas previously you could but the other downside with them is that they they do have a good battery life you'll get an over, well over an hour on a, new, on a brand new one you'll get probably two hours but even on my old one still get 45 to 50 minutes of running time on it but uh, the audio is a non-starter but that's fine um, but the they don't cope well going between light and dark they're they're not good in low light at all but during daytime you'll get absolutely fine footage on it they're slightly oversaturated in the color but you can turn that down in your software when you're editing so 
The other thing that I've battled with, and it has been a bit of a battle, and I don't know if it's going to be included in this clip or not, is a mini disc recorder. And I use that to try and capture exhaust sound. So it sits under the seat with a little microphone next to it. I use an external battery and try and record my exhaust sound. It has been a constant headache. Um, I've almost given up on it. When it works, it works very, very, very well. In fact, on my review of the Benelli Leoncino, it was shot, when that video was shot, it was very cold. Uh, to the extent I was so cold, I wasn't thinking straight, but I didn't start the Tascam audio recorder. Fortunately, the mini disc recorder saved the day. It sat under the seat and captured everything. And as a result, I was able to redub my my um, spoken word over it, overdub and do a voiceover effectively, and save the video, which has then gone on to be my, my best video with 53,000 odd views. So that saved me in a huge way. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a permanent addition. It was bought for a couple of pounds on eBay. I'd like to be able to use it because I kind of get a bit of a kick out using the old tech as well. There you go. So anyway, I'm going to just switch between a couple of the cameras. Uh, do probably a few minutes just of riding and shut the hell up. I'm probably going to pull over and stop the mini disc recorder because I've captured everything I need to capture with it. Um, although I am nearly home. But um, we'll see. And I will put a little subtitle here to tell you if you're listening to the mini disc recorder or not. But it should be giving ambient noise, exhaust sound. So the idea is you can hear the bike, you can hear me, but not everything else. Um, you don't really want to hear the wind, although it is windy as anything today. So there you go. So we're just going to switch a little bit between forward and backward facing cameras. Enjoy the Buckinghamshire countryside. It's quite pretty even on a dull day like this. So forward facing is the Drift 1080 HD. And rear facing is the, um, is the SJ5000. And they're both recording at 1080p. And see what you think. There you go, it's a little bit of a comparison of the cameras. If you like these videos, hit the like and subscribe button. We've got some very exciting stuff coming up soon. We just had something on the race bike set up, which is going to make it much, much faster. Of course, that's the Nitrous. Um, we took a visit up to Wizards of Oz and Doncaster, and we had their director, Trevor, check over and set up the system for us. And uh, we're ready to hit the dyno, which we're doing on a week Friday. So there will be a video from that. We're going back to Cross Customs. And uh, let's see how much power she makes snorting a bit of laughing gas. But in the meantime, if you like these videos, hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, if I'm not blown off the face of the planet, we'll see you soon.